Hello, everybody. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It is Thursday, April 25th, last opening of the Broadway season. I'm Beth Stevens. Beth, it's been a long week. I'm Paul <laughs> Wontorek. And we're here in the studio with Mr. Eric King. Hello, everyone. And we have a very special guest today, Paul. Ryan Redmond's here. Lady yeah. O. Lady Olaf from Frozen. <laughs> we will get to... But also one, one of our oh, yes. favorite classic vloggers. We like to yes. shout out our vloggers. Cheer our Factor. Vlog. Cheer Factor. Beth always it quizzes on. me on the names of the vloggers. But blogs. that's one of our favorites. Yeah, yeah. It is. Sure, sure. We will okay. get to Ryan in a minute, but first our top five. So the Tonys aren't for another month, but we already have some winners. Well, look, it's Tony. So Tuesday, the Tony nominations are happening. It's, so that's why the last, the cutoff is tonight's Beetlejuice opening. And then no more shows are eligible for Tonys. We're going to rest um, up over the weekend. Yes. And then we have nominations <laughs> next but week. But unrelated to that, they uh, also give out special Tonys for Lifetime Achievement. That's a thing. It is. That's a very special thing, actually. And this year, we found out three very deserving people will be winning. Terrence McNally, the great, great playwright Terrence McNally, actress Rosemary Harris, and orchestrator Harold Wheeler. Now let's talk about these three talented people. Three legends. Yes. So Terrence McNally, of course, he, you know, he's had so many of his plays coming back, and right now Frankie and Johnny and the Claire de Lune is in rehearsal. Yes. Uh, Audrey McDonald's in that. She's going to win her 18th Tony for That's that. That's right. Next, 18, in number 20. Yeah. Um, but he, but he, let's see. He won Tonys for what? Love, Valor, Compassion. Um, he, a master class, Ragtime, Kiss the Spider Woman. Right, all, because all, he also writes books to musicals. He writes musicals, like Ragtime, and he writes Anastasia. plays. Mm -hmm. He's super talented. We love him. Uh, Rosemary Harris is a total stage legend who also is a Tony winner, and she's currently on Broadway. She is, in we, My Fair Lady. Yeah, we just did an interview with her last month. Imogen interviewed her. She, uh, she's Mrs. Higgins in My Fair Lady. So you can go see her and co congratulate her tonight if you'd like. Um, and Harold Wheeler has done the orchestrations of like all my favorite cast all albums. All the classics. But like all the musicals that are like the cast albums that are actually the like ones the ones listen I listen to, to all the time. Are you ready? The Life, The Full Monty, Hairspray, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. These are like, and now the new Ain't, Ain't Too Proud. Amazing. So he's a great, obviously very jazz based, like a fantastic orchestrator. They will all be honored at the 2019 Tony Awards, which are June 9th at Radio City. It's very exciting. Congratulations. And nominations have been announced for these awards honoring the best in Broadway, off-Broadway, and off-off-Broadway. It seems like we say that all the time, that we're just having nominations, but mm -hmm. it's award season, and Drama Desk nominations came out today. Are you ready? I I'm not ready because I'm over the drama of the awards. Okay, forget it. Get, I'm on over, on like, story. us all, like... You should see, by the way, There's a lot you of should drama see the, drama. the office when these lists come out. We lose, we were so angry. We lose our minds. We get and personally excited. attached to and, things. Yeah, we get excited. And excited. We're excited for the nominees, but then there's so many people that don't get nominated. It's, you know, there are choices are made. We're passionate. And this is the 64th <laughs> annual Drama Desk Awards. Mm -hmm. They're older than us, Paul. Something finally is. The ceremony will be on June 2nd. Here's who uh, Michael Yuri will host. Uh, Oklahoma led the list with 12 mm -hmm. nods, and just behind that, Tootsie with 11, mm -hmm. and the off Broadway off Broadway's Rags Parkland sings the songs of future of the future. I can't talk today with nine. Mm -hmm. Look at the full list of nominees on Broadway.com. Some notable things though. All the lead actors in a play are from off Broadway productions. Mm -hmm. Very unusual. Well, because there's no great performers on Broadway this year. No. Brian Cranston, Jeff Daniels, Adam Driver, Tracy. I, whatever. There Doesn't were matter. options. There were, there were other there options. There were options, but, but we like that they mix in the off-Broadway, but it just brings it up things. It keeps it interesting, things. but don't look at it Emotions. as an indicator for the Tony nominations if they're not going to include the Broadway people. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, look at Broadway.com to catch that whole list. And this isn't a Mamma Mia joke. Here they go again. <laughs> Yes, Paul? No. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I just want to put that. Eric, put the timer on. Uh, Rock of Ages. You guys all love Rock of Ages. You guys? It, all of us do. You guys. You love it. We it's a show that's really fun, and it's also really fun when you drink. Okay. Do you, I remember they used to go at those. Remember? Lighters? Yeah, fake lighters? The fake lighters. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Rock of Ages, it ran on Broadway for how long did it run on Broadway, Very actually? Very long time. Well, a while, because this is the 10th anniversary now. Um, and I think, are they doing a concert, like, right now on the... Okay, Probably that's what on. people are actually watching. Uh, they were watching. supposed to do a thing yeah. on the, the top of... Uh, uh, Hard Rock Cafe. The Hard Rock yeah. in Times Square. Thank like a live know. concert. 
Run over there right now if you want to see it. That was supposed to happen. Anyway, um, it's coming back off Broadway. It's going to play New World Stages from June 19th to September 29th. So they say. Like we'll a see. It, might run of another, ages. it could run another 10 years. The original <laughs> creative team uh, director Kristen, Han- Kristen Hanji, choreographer Kelly Devine, who's now an Olivier Award winner. Oh. Um, anyway, yeah, it, it originally started at New World. Well, started in LA. Then they did it at New World Stages and it moved to Broadway. And now it's going back off Broadway. You know what it's about. It's about great hair metal. Go okay. see it. That sums it up. And this off Broadway musical is coming to an end. Oh, it's always sad when we have to tell you about closing notices. This is for Sincerely Oscar, which is off-Broadway. It's the Oscar Hammerstein II bio musical playing at a- the Acorn Theater on Theater Row, and it will close on May 12th. Started on March 27th and opened on April 4th. Um, so catch it while you can. And this Broadway alum comedian is taking over for this hosting gig. You're referring to Mike Berbeglia. Yes, I am. Who made his Broadway debut this year in the new one uh, at the Court Theater. He will be hosting the Lortel Awards, which are the fancy off-Broadway awards. Um, He's stepping in for Wayne Brady, who had a scheduling conflict. Um, But they're in good hands because everybody loves Mike Berbiglia. He had, uh, did they tape the new one for Netflix? I make that up. Probably. I don't know. Yes. I think they did announce that. So if you missed it, you can, you can, uh, well, now they have to show it because I just announced that. No, I remember they did. Uh, But he was also in My Girlfriend's Boyfriend and Thank God for Jokes and Sleepwalk with Me. That was his first famous off. So he he knows off Broadway. He's a, he came from off Broadway. Uh, let's see, it's happening May 5th at the NYU Skirball Center. Presenters include, get this, Annalie Ashford, 70 J. Block, Reeve Carney, Jeff Daniels, Jeremy O'Harris, Beth Lovell, Bonnie Milligan, Tim Blake Nelson, Patrick Page. A lot of people, you guys. I can keep going. Will Roland, Stephanie Stiles, Sergio Trujillo, Brandon Uranowitz, Alice Ripley. <laughs> 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 There's no party without Alice Ripley. So anyway, it's going to be a, a great night, and Mike Birbiglia is going to make it really fun. That's Shall it. we tell people what else is on the what site? What else is on the Besides site? Besides the list of the Drama Desk nominees. Mm-hmm. Right. We have a new show, People, with Jane Howdyshell. That's of right, Lear. Jane Howdyshell. We have Gideon Glick's final vlog, Aww. What's the Dill? Oh. He visits Latanya Richardson-Jackson in her bathtub. And what, and what does Aaron Sorkin say on What's the Dill? He said it's always been a dream of his to be on What's the Dill. Well, because he couldn't get on Cheer Factor. That's I'm sure what it, it started was. with Cheer Factor. That's what it was. Uh, yes, and, like, and then Harry Potter and the Cursed Child celebrated one-year anniversary. And Ink opened last night. And Emilio took some really cool photographs, as we do. And we read Carpet Challenge and opening night footage. And tonight is the opening of Beetlejuice. So happy opening to that show. Yes. Wow. All right. Thanks, Paul. I'm out. You're out. Eric, will you tell us about our guest, please? I would love to. Okay. Ryan Redman is currently gender bending in the role of Olaf on Fro- in Frozen on Broadway. Previously a Broadway.com blogger for Bring It On, Redman is also has also appeared in If Then and Escape to Margaritaville. Follow her on social media at Ryan Reds and leave all your questions in the comments below. Please welcome Ryan and Beth. Thank you, Eric. Welcome, Ryan. Hello. Oh, you look gorgeous as usual. Oh, thank you. Just a slight shimmer. Just a little shimmer because I know you love your makeup. We'll I talk do. about that in a second. <laughs> How's it going over there at Frozen? It's going swell. I just hit, I think, two months. So finally settling in and figuring out the puppet and you are part of the royalty because there's, you know, there's the queen and princess, and you're the lady Olaf. Exactly. (laughs) How did this come about? Did you put your, did you throw your hat in the ring and say, "I want to be a snowman"? No, I wish I was that creative, but um, I got the appointment from my agent, and I thought that he sent me the wrong thing. So I called and I was like, Did the breakdown s- still say that it was a male role? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I Confusing. called it. Yeah, and I called him and I was like, Jed, I think you sent me the wrong appointment. And he was like, no, I didn't. And uh, he said, I wish uh, I could say that we submitted you for this, but they asked for you. And I don't know who asked, but I owe them 100 drinks or so. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so they they asked for me and I... It was cool because I, I got to sort of throw all preconceived notions about it away because I was a female going in for a traditionally male part and just create my own version of Olaf, and Disney was really wonderful allowing me to do that. It's and a total reinvention. 
for you. Well, I mean, not total. Yeah. It's still Olaf. Don't get yeah, excited. Still Olaf. It's still Olaf. Don't worry. So did you have to go to snowman school or puppetry school? How does this work? I did. Well, I, my rehearsals uh, included a lot of puppetry work with Lorenzo uh, Pizzoni, who's our wonderful movement coordinator. And um, it was a lot of trial and error and just figuring out how I worked the puppet. And uh, Michael Curry, who's our wonderful puppet designer, who did Lion King and some a bajillion awesome things. Um, they, you know, they worked with me to figure out how I would be comfortable maneuvering Olaf and just, it was a lot of like some having conversations to, right? with people as Olaf. Yes, it did take a lot of getting used to. <laughs> Cause he has to blink when normal people blink, the, the, you know, the oh, amount that normal, yeah, he does blink. His eyebrows go up and down. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of just you know figuring out my version of him. So which muscles are being used? Um, every single one. Thumbs. Um, thumbs. It's like a lot of rock climbing muscles. I think I used to rock climb as a child, but no longer. It's like top of the arm muscles, shoulder blades, traps, core. Are you getting a lot of PT? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> getting a lot of PT. <laughs> All right, we're gonna take your questions, but I have some more first. Me first, people. <laughs> this must feel like a little bit full circle for you because you were an if then with Adina Menzel at the like height of the frozen frenzy. Yeah, it it really is awesome. It, when the when the whole, movie I'm talking about yeah the when movie. the movie came out yeah we were in D.C. doing if then at the National Theater and it was the beginning of it all and she rented out a theater for us to see the movie. Um, so it's cool to come really she full circle. She rented out a theater for you all to see yeah, the movie. Yeah, it was sweet. awesome and we were losing our minds. She wasn't there, which is probably for the best because we would have just you know, probably screamed All jumped and, on her. Yeah, and <laughs> bombarded her. But um, I think she was doing the Oscars at that point. Um, but I just did her benefit concert for her Broadway Foundation. And um, I was like, Adina, got to come see Frozen. She said she would. Oh. Now so she we're gonna has hold to. Her to it. Now no. she has to. She can do whatever she wants. But I love like your to range like because you just did Margaritaville, which was, you know, very tropical. And now you're a snowman. I know. <laughs> this I is really can range. do it all, people. <laughs> <laughs> all climates. All right. I know you guys have questions, so let's get to them. Okay. He's scrolling. He's scrolling. There's so a lot. Alexandra would like to know, oh, are there any other gender-bent dream roles that you'd like the opportunity to play? Oh, I mean, I feel like obvious cliche one. I'd love to be Dear Evan Hansen. Dear Evan Hansen, I would love to be Dear Evan Hansen. I would be <laughs> Evan Hansen. Um, Sweeney Todd, maybe somewhere down the line. That'd be cool. Oh, I um, like these. What else? And Evan is a girl's name, too. I'm yeah. just saying. Evan. It doesn't matter, but yes. I'm just saying. Well, add an extra N, like I have an extra N. Exactly. <laughs> Dear Ryan Hansen. Yes. <laughs> I love those. Those are great. How did the process of, of like, uh, rearranging the music go with, with, because do you sing in the same... You're not in the same key, are you? No. The key is... Slightly higher, um, Brian Yusufer and Stephen Remus uh, helped me play around uh, in Are rehearsals. Are those your orchestrators? Uh, Stephen Remus is our music supervisor, mm -hmm. and Brian Yusufer is our conductor. Um, they do all the things. Um, but they worked with me to figure out what would be the best key, and we, we settled on a certain one. And it's comfy and belty and exciting. And it's great that you got to put your own spin on it and, yeah. and have your input. So it's sort of tailor-made for you. Yeah, it was cool. And everyone asks me a lot, you know, did I have to fall into a mold, uh, you know, the Disney mold of Olaf? And I really didn't. Adrian Sarpel, who's uh, our associate director, um, even starting with the through the audition process, was super collaborative. And, um, and Tim Cook, our resident director, took me through the rehearsal process and I just got to find my Olaf and um, they, they were super supportive. Did they build you a new Olaf? Uh, it's different uh, parts. So like it's a different hand insert to go into his head and mm -hmm. a harness and a different J bar, all these puppet terms. That yeah, all I'm learning. Lots of technical terms. <laughs> so she's a snow, still a snowman though. He's still a snowman. He's still a snowman. Yeah. Well, Jim would like yeah. to know are audiences surprised when you're on stage or when you come out of the stage door to see that a woman's playing Olaf. How, what is what is the reaction been like? Um, I mean, I don't think they're surprised. When I come out on stage for the first time, I don't come out until about 50 to 55 minutes into the show. 
Um, so I think at that point, people are so excited to see Olaf that it's probably a mixture of, oh, my, and like, oh, finally, he's here. Um, but the response at the stage door uh, has been spectacular. Everybody's just so excited, and they they give me so many compliments and say, I love that a woman is playing this part. It's so cool. Mm -hmm. And um, Don't you all love that a woman is playing this part? Isn't yeah. it so cool? Abolish gender. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. You yes. said it. But also, this show is so much about empowering women and about sisterhood. And now you're part of that. And that's exactly. pretty cool. And, um, all right, I'm sorry, go on, Eric, I interrupted you. <laughs> so someone, this is kind of a silly question, but who'd, who'd be most likely to burp on stage? Who asked is, this question? Is, is, is what is Laura happening? asked this question. <laughs> oh, Laura, what's going on? I don't have anything today? silly on stage. Silly. Who's oh, my silliest? gosh. Who would be most likely, probably <laughs> um, Ross Leakites. He's pretty silly. Nicholas Ward, who plays our king, is a goofball. Um... Yeah, those guys, they're hysterical. What was your, like, uh, journey with Disney? Did you grow up uh, you loving Disney? Disney? What, what was your introduction to it? I loved Disney. Beauty and the Beast was actually my first production I ever saw at the Fox Theater in Atlanta, where I'm from. Um, so started from a young age. I, I loved Little Mermaid growing up. I wanted to be Ariel so bad. Um, now I want to be Ursula. Um, Ooh, I could see either of those. Twist. I would like both. to buy the tickets. Yeah, yeah we're ready. <laughs> a one woman Little Mermaid. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, but it was always a huge part of our family. And uh, I now have a niece who's two. And she, she Did she loves see you it. in Frozen yet? She hasn't seen me yet. She might be a little young. She was a little <laughs> young to go to the theater. Yeah. But she loves the movie. And she can say, hola, hola. As long as she can say it, that's right. all that matters. <laughs> I love that. Um, what was it like to go in with, because you went in with Noah J. Ricketts and, um, and the new... Um, Joe Carroll. And Joe Carroll. Mm -hmm. What was it like to go in with them to, this, the uh, new to this company? It was awesome. Well, I've known Noah for almost 10 years, um, so that was extremely exciting for him to um, be moved uh, to play Kristoff. Um, we share a dressing room, which is really cool and exciting, and speaking of gender bendy, and... Um, that was wonderful, and Joe is absolutely a sweetheart, and um, it was cool. The company welcomed us with open arms and... Um, and gave you warm hugs. And gave you lots Obviously. of warm hugs. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I think it was sort of a revitalization for them for this amazing long-running... Uh, well, yeah, I think it's, it's long considered running. long-running now show. Um, it was like a little uh, exciting new boost. Did Greg Hildreth give you any pointers? He did. He was, he was so sweet. He just sort of told me the, the ins and outs of how to rest in between shows and um, you know, give me some puppetry secrets that I can't tell. Oh, secrets. Oh my gosh. So, because we, we kept on mentioning Cheer Factor, which if you haven't seen it, just go look it up. It's the vlog that Ryan did for Bring It On. What are your biggest memories from Bring It On? Uh, that was such a great show. It was my heart and soul. I love that show so much. It was my first love. I grew up with that show. Uh, it was at the St. James Theater, which is another full circle moment to be back at the St. James doing Frozen. Um, it, it was absolutely the most spectacular experience. Um, I'm ready for a reunion concert when you uh, guys are. We're, I'm always cast. ready. I mean, truly, like you look at that cast now, it's like Taylor Lauder and Adrian, Adrian Warren, and Ariana DeBose. So good. Some heavy hitters in there, and um, and all starting out back then. Yeah, we we I think we made like thirty two Broadway debuts. Crazy, which is absolutely wild. But I love that that team, and um, Bridget was one of my most favorite parts I've ever played. And so many people come back and talk to me at the stage door at Frozen, and message me on Instagram and say that they're playing her in their production. And um, I love that she lives on, and I feel like we're all a little bit Bridget. We are. We're all Bridget. I need that T-shirt. Yeah. That's great. And this this could be the last question, but I'm I'm curious to know. It, do you have an understudy that's also a woman, or are there standbys that are? No, women my for? two understudies are men: Jeremy Davis and Austin Lish. Um, but the orchestra just switches over to the old the old key. Oh right. Um, oh, hopefully, that's fair. hopefully, or else it would be a exciting <laughs> and maybe not so exciting moment for the boys you who have be, to sing it. You'd be a tenor <laughs> all of the sudden. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, it's two boys that cover me. That. 
Ryan. Oh, okay. Actually, oh, we have, oh, we have one, one more. more. Okay. Oh. Do you still keep in touch with uh, Escape to Margaritaville cast? Um, do you guys have like a group chat or something? Okay, or? I want to hear about all your group chats. You've got your Bring It On. Uh huh. You've got your If still, Then. Yep. Yeah, you've got your Margaritaville people. Yep. Margaritaville. Margaritaville is the most recent, so it's the most um, active. And Usual Girls, which oh, got nominated which for got a drama nominated. Nominated. That's right. And yes. Tyne Raffaelli was one of my favorite directors ever. And um, Midori, who's the lead in the play. I'm so We're excited for Broadway focus, so we haven't yeah, mentioned that. Yeah, I know. That. That off broad, that's off Broadway. That's off Broadway. Broadway. Um, but Margaritaville is the most current one blowing up my phone. Um, <laughs> and what are we currently talking Well, Jen Rias, who was in Margaritaville with us, uh, just announced that she's pregnant. So Aww. that's been the current. And now you've announced it. So everyone no, she, not, she announced it on Instagram. Don't worry. Um, can you imagine if I just outed her? We'd like to exclusively announce. <laughs> we, 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 you heard Horror. it here, folks. Um, <laughs> that's so sweet, though, that yeah. you're all in touch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everybody's off doing awesome things to even go Were you all getting spray tan together for Margaritaville? <laughs> Was that part of it? It felt like everyone was very tall. We, we wanted Paul it. Was. I'm so pale that I that I needed it, but we had to play a lot of different characters. Right. So some were, some were not. Yeah, Paul definitely was getting a spray tan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I always think that's funny. It was on his to... vlog. Yeah. Uh, yes, on his vlog. Another vlogger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Listen, anytime you want to do a vlog, let us know. I always want to so do a vlog. It. it was so oh, fun. Oh, also, you're a makeup enthusiast, as I said at the beginning. It's yes. literally in her Instagram bio. So mm -hmm. what's your number one product that you cannot live without? <gasps> Um, Hardest question of the day. I would have to say liquid eyeliner. Felt tip liquid eyeliner. Cat Von D. It's a very sharp cat eye. Mm -hmm. She's got it. It's good. If we and can and Olaf wears Beverly Hills highlight. Yeah, Olaf wears a lot of makeup. Yeah. Because I, again, I'm so pale that <laughs> I wear so much white in the show, and the, the show is a lot of whites and blues. I, the first time I came on stage, Ann Ford Coates, who's our makeup designer, was like, so here's we a can't new shade. It's like five <laughs> shades darker than my here's actual skin. Yeah. Here's a really dark bronzer. Um, so we had to balance it out. But Olaf has a lot of highlights and I love bronze. It. Ryan, yeah. thank you for coming. Thank you so we'll much. Come back anytime. Always. It's part of the family. Thank you. You guys, I know you've seen Frozen. Go back and see Lady Olaf and company. Eric, will you take us out? I would love to. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at five every single day on Facebook. And if you like a podcast, we've got a podcast. So go to wherever you get those and slam that subscribe button. Tune in to on Monday, excuse me, tune in tomorrow when we talk to Rebecca Naomi Jones of Oklahoma.